love. I love you more than I've ever loved anyone. Everyone wants it. I guess you could say I just want to have a meaningful relationship with someone special. But what happens when you get it? You go completely insane because love is a mental illness. Now, to be clear, I'm not talking about familial or platonic love. I'm talking about obsessional, romantic love. Nietzsche was right. Love is merely the lust for possession. It's a fundamentally instinctive biological force, which is why it's kind of bizarre how society exalts it as an idealistic moral good. You can argue that love is a biological necessity, but a moral good I don't think so. And maybe Nietzsche should have realized that before he caught syphilis from a prostitute and went mad. Not good. Anyway, people think egoism and greed are the opposite of love. Au contraire. Love is about possession and assimilation. What could be more egotistic and greedy than trying to possess another human? Romantic love is essentially a base instinct rooted in the reptilian brain, which is only given a sheen of morality or splendor by modern culture, which hijacked it, commercialized it, and warped it out of all proportion. What you call love was invented by guys like me to sell nylons. For most of history, romantic love was considered a disease that you had to catch and get over, like chicken pox. Romeo and Juliet wasn't a celebration of love, it was a warning. Same story with Antony and Cleopatra. Dude goes mentally ill from falling in love, then kills himself. Then she kills herself. Not good. Tristan and Isolt both end up dead. Not good. Apollo and Daphne, their failed romance ended up with her being turned into a tree. Not good. Helen of Troy's tryst with Prince Paris of Troy, that ended up in a massive war. Believe me, not good. Socrates. Look at this, we can pass this. No, oh, not that one. The Greek philosopher Socrates said that the male libido is like being chained to a madman. Some people claim that it was the poet Sophocles that said that, but then if it was, that previous quip wouldn't have worked. Anyway, the poet Sophocles said of love, To my great delight, I have escaped from it, and feel as if I had escaped from a frantic and savage master. What could be more of a burden than being shackled to an irrational beast? What could be more catastrophic to individual identity than the merging of two people. You complete me. What could be more enslaving than the complete surrender and devotion to another person at the expense of one's own sanity and free will? Not good. Nietzsche said men who are inclined to complete devotion are not men. Soy boy. In the case of women, they have to play act the role of being distant or in other words, simulate a lack of love. Because as soon as a woman becomes too accessible to a man, he loses interest. When you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the pussy. It's all one huge, tragic comedy. The point is this. Romantic love is corrosive, self-sabotaging, inherently delusional for both sexes, and most of the time it ends in abject misery. Believe me, not good. Love is a mental illness. It's at times an episodic, transitory, obsessive, compulsive, and emotionally lethal disorder. I believe so strongly in the destructive power of love that it should be the subject of instruction in schools along with sex and driver's ed. Love infects, contaminates, and destroys your will to resist. It destabilizes and knocks you for a loop. It's a singular, single-serve, client-centered, and individually targeted and focused cult. Stanton Peel and Archie Brodsky described romantic love as, quote, a sterile, ingrown dependency. I'm just saying, sometimes it's not all it's cracked up to be. So all you incels need to calm your tits. I lost my baby. Romantic love detracts from the only true source of sustained happiness creativity and self-mastery. The perfect fusion of the Apollonian and the Dionysian. Being in love is like being a substance abuser in need of higher and higher doses. Neural scans show that the early stages of romantic love look like a brain experiencing drug addiction. The same brain region where we found activity becomes active also when you feel the rush of cocaine. This creates not so much an emotion, but the need to fulfill a craving. The brains of people in love who've been rejected look like junkies going through withdrawal. The areas that light up in their brains are the same ones associated with physical pain. Some sufferers even take the opioid blocker naltrexone 
to relieve their symptoms. Love also switches off parts of the brain involved in decision making, causing people to make stupid decisions which harm their own self-interests. Romeo, Julia, Anthony, Cleopatra, all idiots who made stupid decisions because they were mentally ill. Not good. Self-sabotage is a byproduct of romantic love. How many times have we seen Romeo and Juliet writ large in society, with people being driven either to kill themselves or others because of this aberrant pathology. Leave him alone, Miss Elsa. You bad luck to him. Despite being seen as a positive emotion, romantic love also causes a drop in levels of serotonin, to the point where loved up people are indistinguishable from those suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder which is a mental illness. Low serotonin levels cause anxiety, irrationality, and extreme jealousy. Now, it's important to stress that long-term stable love is completely distinct from new romantic love because it lights up different areas of the brain. I think that we're becoming love junkies because our brains are being rewired by the internet. And this is why cheating and divorce continues to increase. Since we collectively killed God, Humanity has been searching to fill the meaning-shaped hole in its psyche. We try to achieve this partly by engaging in emotional incontinence, by overly emoting and placing too much emphasis on new relationships. Everyone is chasing that initial dopamine rush of new love, and as soon as it fades, we desperately strive to replace it with a fresh source. Remember the seven-year itch? Well, now the average relationship lasts just two years and nine months, and it's shrinking every year. Why? social media and dating apps. Over a third of people in a 2014 poll said at least part of the reason why their relationship ended was because their partner had met someone else or was flirting with someone else on social media. Over half blamed social media generally for the breakup. The increasing ease with which we can source that new burst of dopamine to meet our junky addiction for fresh love, is decreasing the average length of existing relationships and preventing them from moving on to the later stages of commitment, marriage, and children. When your brain is rewired to be in a state of permanent adolescence, the kid in the candy store constantly looking to try the new treat, that kills your ability to form long-term meaningful relationships. So in summary, romantic love is a mental illness. It has the same effect as drug addiction. It's a kind of pathology that can lead to self-destruction. And while taking that risk is a biological necessity to foster the urge to procreate, people are refusing to move on to the next stage of stable long-term commitment because social media and dating apps have rewired our brains by creating on-demand supplies of the initial drug, something that we never had before in the evolution of humanity. That's partly why the length of relationships is shrinking. That's partly why fewer people in technocentric societies are getting married or having kids. That's why relationships are in such a mess. That's why we're all screwed. Because our brains are being scrambled, infantilized, and set on a constant loop of being stuck in a cycle of mental illness. Not good. <laughs> Please click the big red button to subscribe, it really helps me when you do that, and click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.